Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science 3010, Statistics for the Behavioral Sciences at Utah Valley University. In this video, we are looking at the second practice test for Chapter 3, which is on Central Tendency. The first question on this test is, which of the following is not a measure of central tendency? And the choices are the mean, the median, the mode, and the standard deviation. Well, of these four choices, it's the standard deviation which is not a measure of central tendency. It's actually a measure of variation. Um, we'll talk about it in chapter four. The mean, the median, and the mode are the three most common measures of central tendency. Again, not the only ones, but the most common, and we use them extensively in this chapter. Question number two, what is the minimum level of measurement needed to calculate the median? Well, to calculate the median, you have to be at least able uh, well, actually, you have to choose between nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. The answer is ordinal, because to calculate the median, you have to at least be able to put be able to put things in order, so you can count in towards the middle. So an ordinal statistic, which means first, second, third, fourth, as opposed to one, two, three, which are cardinal numbers, for instance, an ordinal statistic is sufficient to get the median. Uh, nominal is not sufficient, because it doesn't put things into order, so you can't arrange them that way. Um, you can get a median for the interval and ratio, but the question is about what is the minimum level, and the answer is ordinal. All right, what is the mean for these data? We've got six numbers, 3, 1, 2, 5, 3, 4. And the choices are 6, 3.5, or 3, or cannot be calculated. And the answer to this is 3. Now, let's take a look at how that works, because this one actually involves calculations. The formula uh, for the mean well, first thing I did is I actually took the, the numbers and I put them in order. Even though you don't have to do that for the mean, I still find it helpful. It's easier to keep track of what's going on. I have a big capital M here because that's the APA, the American Psychological Association's preferred symbol for the mean, and I can't do an X bar in uh, this program I'm using. But there's our, uh, the mean is equal to the sum of X, and that is the sum of the scores. You add them all up and you divide by N. Uh, and that's the number of scores. So in this case, if you add up those numbers, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, you get 18. That's the sum of x. The number of scores is 6 because there are 6 numbers there. So 18 divided by 6 is equal to 3. And so 3 is the mean of uh, these data. All right, number 4. In a negatively skewed distribution, which measure will generally have the highest value? The choices are the mean, the mode, and the median, or that they are all the same. Well, in a negatively skewed distribution, the mode is going to have the highest value. And let's take a look why. Here we have a negatively skewed distribution. Most of the people are at the high end, but we have outliers and extreme scores that are far away from all the others on the left side, on the low end. And you see that the mean tends to get pulled in the direction of the outliers, the median a little bit, but the mode kind of stays put. And so the mode is going to be the farthest to the right, which gives it the highest value, the highest score. So the answer to this one is the mode. Last one on this uh, quiz, which measure of central tendency is most influenced by outliers? The choices are the mean, the mode, the median, or all are the same. The answer to this one is the mean. As we saw a moment ago, the mean gets pulled farther away than any of the others towards the extreme scores. That makes it influence. It makes it um, actually a rather misleading statistic when you have skewed data or outliers. Anyhow, so just trying to hammer this one home, the mean is the most influenced. Others are more resistant. And that finishes the second pretest on chapter three.